As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only Sloops McGloops. What's up, dude? Another watch party in the books. Yeah, count it. Hanging out, watching VPR, sharing comments, saving it for the pod. Yeah, we are much better about saving for the pod now. You're always good at it. I, I've gotten better about keeping my mouth shut during the show. Yeah, but I still have to actively keep my mouth shut. I, I laugh a lot. I know you do. You do laugh a lot, and you also go on your phone more than I do, and that irritates me. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing as when we're doing the podcast and I'm on my phone. You're like, it's very distracting. It is. Even our commenters have said it's distracting. You have gotten better at that. How thing. is it distracting to the commenters? Because it looks like you're not paying attention. Oh, I'm, I'm paying attention. I know I'm you locked are. In. I'm aware. They are not. But it is also distracting for me <laughs> because I'm like, dude, make eye contact. Look at me. Look me in the eyes. I don't want to. You look me in the eyes when I'm talking to I, you. I only look in your eyes during the podcast when I'm waiting to either say something at the end of your sentence or whatever might be happening. Just to let you know, like, hey, no, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer. No, you don't know because we did this, like, I don't even know if it wasn't last week. It was two days ago. Whatever the fuck. It was yesterday. Recorded. It was yesterday. Wow. What, did I speak over you or something? You don't remember that? No. Well, you were doing something and I started to talk and you were like, what the hell? You're distracting me. Oh, no. I, I thought think... I was going to leave you hanging for some reason. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because usually in those moments when I'm asking for like, when I'm attempting to an illicit, re- wow, it's going to be one of those nights. Okay. Buckle up, everybody. This is what happens for VPR. We always record right after the show because we want to get it out quick for the fans. For you guys. Not for us. For the fans. For you guys. That's why we do it. But when I attempt to, an, I did it again. Elicit. Elicit. I'm, I keep wanting to say unelicit. When I attempt to elicit a response from you, those are usually the times you don't respond. How would you unelicit something? I wasn't even saying unelicit. I was saying anelicit, like A-N, like unelicit. Okay, that yeah. sounds dirty now. Stay with me here. Yeah, that sounds a little gross. <laughs> let's, um, move let's move on. Let's just move on. Let's move on. Let's move on to better topics yeah. because I, I, I want to give you some options. Uh, Drake's dick. So that's one of them. I know. <laughs> that's definitely one of them, of course. The other one is, and this is really funny because on Saturday, I guess this just kind of goes to the territory, but when you meet new people and they find out that you have a Bravo podcast, they ask you about everything reality TV. Yeah, that's valid. I had to answer questions of which I know nothing about, about The Bachelor. Oh, yeah, we are not. Like, I have no fucking, but apparently he's from Philly. So it's like, oh, yeah, he's from Philly. Like, you guys should probably be watching that. It's like, no, I'm okay. Yeah. But he popped up, and I thought it was really funny because I had to answer those questions on Saturday. He popped up today because he was, I guess, during the show or maybe during an interview, he confused Gypsy Rose with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Jesus Christ, what? Just a classic Philly idiot. Oh, God. Where is he from in Philly? Do you know? No idea. I didn't go that far. Somebody said South Philly, but, you know, people talk. Wh- how the fuck do I, you confuse I those I guess because they both have three names. Maybe that's what he was going with. Okay. I, I don't know which he was. I didn't dig that deep into the story, but that was the other one. Um, And then, the obviously, the, the obvious one is Drake's dick. I mean, I think we got to talk about Drake's dick. We got to talk about Drake's dick. So, I texted you early. Because I was at the gym and I was um, going to the bathroom. It's already sounding weird, yeah. And on Instagram, someone made a post like it was a reaction thing to like, oh my God, Drake's dick. And I was like, wait a minute. So I need to ask this to you. Okay. And I want you to be honest with me. Okay. Have you seen Drake's dick? I have. How did you come to find Drake's dick? I had to look for it. You did? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I actively looked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. me too. I was just yeah, it was Because sure. the funny thing is, and there's memes about this now, but this is what I fell for. The first couple before you had texted me this morning, okay. I saw on Twitter Drake leaks, and I'm like, "Oh, Drake's got new music coming out," <laughs> and he does that. Like he'll have a new album coming out, so like he'll he always casts off like the ones that didn't quite make the album, and he puts them out early. And usually they're pretty good. So I'm like, "Oh, let me see if I can find these." I shouldn't have looked for it on Twitter. I should have Googled it. Maybe that could have worked, or yeah, maybe just would've. checked like Spotify first just to see because sometimes that that'll happen. Safe. Something along those lines. Instead, I went through twitter to do it an immediate dick yeah no so and- i didn't look for the dick i looked for the leaks of music and i found dick oh i was just looking for the dick and then i watched the dick yeah i mean you, yeah, gotta you have look. to 
anybody out there, anybody, especially if you're a dude and you're claiming that you didn't go look and try to see Drake's dick, you're lying. You're lying to yourself, your friends, your family, your partner. Don't lie. All right. We all did it and it's okay. Everyone was curious and, you know, good for you, Drake. Good My favorite <laughs> thing to come from all of this was, and I think it was a fake post or he put it up really quickly and deleted it on his Instagram story. Supposedly it said, I didn't try to hide my meat from the world. I tried to hide the world from my meat. <laughs> I hope you posted like, fuck that. Fuck yeah, that's funny. That's the only response to... I don't think it was meat. real. I, I think somebody was very quick to to kind of draw that meme up, but it was fucking great. That's a good meme. But that would be a great response. I mean, it's out there. What are you going to do? Yeah. It's out there. It's There's... not like he's got a small dick. Like, that's the other thing. Yeah, if it was, like, embarrassingly small, then all of a sudden... Now we're just talking about dick. Yeah, now this we're just is... talking about Drake's Welcome dick. to the bra, bros. We're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Let me remind you, we are the straight Bravo podcast. We're going to give him a dick rating at the end of this. <laughs> uh, a hard 10. <laughs> oh, shit. We're off and running. Oh, baby. yeah. That's, that's all I have to talk about for current events. That kind of... Uh, I think that you know covers all of it. It definitely does. Uh, at least 10 inches of it. At least 10 inches. That covers at least 10 <laughs> inches of it. But yeah, I'm glad we could debrief about that because I was curious. I'm also curious. I'm, I might put a poll out to any to all of our listeners and say, ask your boyfriend or significant other how they came to find Drake's dick. And if they say that they word it differently, I will. Okay. But, Thank God. And if they say that they didn't search for it, they're fucking lying to you. Yeah. I because it, that. every group chat was talking about it. Yeah. And at some point you have to be like, all right, I'm left out. I got to check this yeah, thing out. <laughs> Let me see this hog. Let me see <laughs> this hog. But uh, anyway, enough dick talk for today. We'll, we'll regroup next week, but it was VPR. Let's go on to an even bigger dick. Yeah, Tom Sandoval, which, God damn it, I really thought that this season might be different for him, and I don't know why. I just figured going through that much shit and causing that much of a disaster would wake you up ever so slightly, even like an iota of waking up. But no, no, he's delusional. I, would you rather him have done that? I'm talking for like purely entertainment purposes. No, I mean, I want to see this what we're watching but at the same time i'm just trying to think of it from like a human being standpoint but i will say he's playing it pretty much how i thought he would but i was hoping that there was some kind of not even redemption for him because i could give a fuck if he gets redeemed more so to see that he's got a soul that like just has a soul because i don't like to think that there's people in this world that narcissistic i really don't unfortunately there are I have rose-colored glasses. You know that. Know. I'm not an idiot, and I can read people pretty well, but I do like to think that people are not inherently bad people. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm not saying that Tom is not. I'm not defending. I'm saying that's, to me, what was so Wait, Let me pose this question to you. All right, I was on. actually thinking about this. This is like a, a car. This is actually just going to be a glimpse into my mind, and people aren't going to really like it, but uh, <laughs> this is just like a car thought. We haven't While done driving, psychology with Shooter in a yeah, long time. While I'm driving, I'm thinking, and I was I was listening to some sort of podcast. I don't remember what it was. Do you think that if there was any law, like no law and order at all, there were no laws, there's no repercussions for murdering somebody, there's no repercussions oh, not for TV anything shows. like that, not TV shows, okay, just in sorry. life, do you think that there would be more people that adhere to good values or more people that adhere to bad values and just do whatever the fuck they want? If there's no law at all and there's like consequences of your own actions are somebody might come after you, but like you're not going to jail for life. I think there would definitely be more crime. I, I that, that wasn't the question. More go- inherently good people or inherently bad people? See, I still don't think that that scenario would dictate whether or not you're inherently a bad person. I think it's, I think it's the latter. But to answer your question, I think, oh, man. See? But again, see, now we're, it would have to be much more layered than that question because where are, what's their financial standing nope. before the world goes to shit? Doesn't matter. It does matter. Doesn't matter. A lot in life matters. In Not this before scenario. the world goes to shit. It's there is no law and order ever. I understand that. But there has where... been law and order forever, as long like, since the Ten Commandments. And then it falls apart, right? No, never. There oh, never was, never is. Order. Yeah. How long has civilization? This is what people want to hear. Same amount of time. Two thousand. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, yeah, dude. Yeah, two thousand years <laughs> of civilization, huh? No, no, no. Jesus going... started the world. There we go. You know what I was doing. <laughs> That's not, I'm just going by the current year. I don't think the world is 2,000 years old. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm a huge space guy. You really think I think that? Shut up. 
Uh, just to answer black and white, I think, yeah, they're probably more bad than good, but I don't think that means they're bad people. They have to, you got to figure okay. it out. The world, it's an apocalypse. You got to survive. Okay. That's what I think. All right, cool. Let's get back to the show. You're welcome. You yeah. derailed us long enough. But um, <laughs> overall, what did you think about this episode? Uh, I liked it. I think I'm going to like this season a lot. I think there's there are so many layers to peel back, and we're not even fucking close to getting in there at all. Like this is just the absolute top layer. Maybe not even crack through that. Like we're still dealing with the fallout from everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Tom wasn't even in the first episode, which we talked about last week. I think it was important for him not to be there Agreed. because we get to see how everybody else is handling things without him around, kind of mucking it up, which is what he's doing right now. And now we get. The return of Tom. Mm -hmm. So there's so much more to peel back for this season with inner relationships and see how people have changed because this was in, like we kind of laughed it off and we're like, OK, yeah, it's a cheating scandal at the end of the day. Is it really going to shake people to their core? And it, and it did. It did. It really did. I mean, Tom Schwartz, we saw him tonight. Obviously, Sheena last week and Sheena this week. There's so much going on. Lala's a better person. Like there's so many things going on and there's so many different aspects to this show in general, which, let's be honest, they needed it. They did. This show was falling apart a couple years ago. This happened. It could have been a terrible season, but it looks like they're taking a very different approach, which I'm actually really enjoying. So I, I don't think I'm going to eat my words on this one. I'm going to predict that it's going to be just a really good season of seeing all these different layers. I think so, too. I think we're in for a solid season, and I think that what they've done a good job of thus far is not forcing anything. They're just putting the cameras out there and letting these scenes happen, and I appreciate that part of it. And I think you can honestly lump episode one and two into one big episode. Like this is just we the preamble, like we always talk about here. We have our uh, long. You know what would have been cool is a theatrical release of the first two episodes. Uh, that would have been. People would have gone cool. to that. I don't know. Limited release. Maybe Why? Bravo needs to start looking into things like that. That would be fun because that would be a party. That would be a wild time, like in an AMC, like actually like movie theater. Yeah. yeah, I think there's something there. I do think there's something there. All right, let's write, jot that one down. Uh, all right. I'm trying to make sound effects in the I mic. Hope, I hope that comes through. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. But let's get into the episode. As we saw at the end of last week, Tom made it back from New Zealand. But it's his first confessional that we've seen this season. And obviously, he was in New Zealand. And he's talking about, you know, he's gotten to deal with more hate than ever recently. And he wanted to be able to take all of that hate. So he thought that Special Forces was the right opportunity to do that. What actually happened was he found a way to get the fuck out of there. To escape the hate. To escape yeah. the hate and go make more money. That's what happened. This has nothing to do with you being a better person. But the best thing that he said was, I need to be able to handle the things that life throws at me. Yep. You threw these things at you, you idiot. This is all you're doing. It is a boomerang. Yeah, this is not life. This is Tom Sandoval. So this is what you get. And you avoided it for so long and let the dust settle. Well, all of, like that's what this episode was, honestly, by juxtaposing him against everybody else. Because now they're talking about Tom and we needed them to talk about Tom. And I'm glad they are now. But it's showing you that they were left to deal with everything he caused. The restaurant is in shambles. Friendships are in shambles. People are in shambles. He hasn't had to address any of it. Instead, he went on his quote-unquote self-healing journey to New Zealand and on tour with this stupid-ass band. Oh, and we get to see Jason tonight. Great. That's not learning or reflecting. That's avoiding. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, this whole first conversation was very indicative of what we're going to get from Tom this year. Uh -huh. So your hopes and dreams of him maybe coming back with his heart in his hand, feeling a little better and trying to mend relationships right out the window. I didn't want to see that. Let me clarify. Hopes and dreams. That's not you have <laughs> been <laughs> gaslighty all season. It's only been two episodes. I want to. <laughs> well, look, I know that you're new to the world. It's been around for a little bit longer than 2000 years, but this is what's going to happen. We're going to get this version of Tom who is immediately planting. And we knew that like he went on the special forces show because he could deal with something that was harder than the things that he's been doing. You know, he's been working in the restaurant industry and things have gotten surreal for him. So he needs to get down and gritty and go out there and he can cry on camera and make people feel bad for him. That's what he wants. Everything that he's doing is just image-based. He's yeah. trying to rebuild his image and get people to feel sorry for him. That's the same reason why he's sitting in those confessionals talking about Raquel, talking about being in love with her. He's not fucking in love with her. No. He just knows that that's going to, and nobody's going to fall for this, I would hope. There are idiots out there, but some people might fall for it. All right, there are idiots out there. 
people are going to fall for the fact that he was quote unquote in love with Raquel and he wants to see what else is like going on with that relationship because that's what people do when they cheat. If they kind of lean into the cheating relationship, then they'll say, oh, well, maybe he really was in love and Ariana wasn't good for him and he just found his only way out. That's what he's trying to do is just paint himself in this image that he spent weeks and weeks in New Zealand trying to kind of conjure up in his own head. Yeah, but that completely negates the entire time he was on tour with his band and saying jokes about Rachel at her expense, but yep. you're in love with her? Like, that's what's so funny is just because you weren't filming the show, you've been on camera the past year. Everyone's looking at what you're doing. We've seen you be a narcissistic asshole on stage and disregard everybody and their feelings during this whole thing. Now you want to come back in front of the camera in a confessional and profess your love about Rachel that you want to give it another go? Well, look, Jason did ask us personally to give him a chance to That's let true. things shake out <laughs> and tell us in his own words what happened. So we, I think we owe it to Jason to just, to just hear Tom out, you know? Let's hear his side of the story. That was the dumbest Fucking DM idiot. we ever got. He, I can't believe, and for everybody out there, just to break down the story entirely, because I don't give two shits. Forever ago, before all this happened, when Tom Sandoval and the Most Extras came out, we posted about him, and they reached out to us, and they gave us free tickets and out in L.A. It was a whole thing, and remained in contact up until Scandival. When that shit happened, I posted something talking shit about Tom. Jason, who runs that account, DMs us and says, hey, guys, there's a lot of hate being thrown around right now. You should hear out Tom's side of the story first instead of adding to all the hate, to which I'm pretty sure we responded, ha, 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 ha. What side of the story? We don't care. <laughs> and when the fuck were we going to hear Tom's side of the story, by the way? We would have had to wait for months. Like, what if we were these big Tom supporters and we have to wait for months for him to do his stupid podcast to hear his side of the story, which, by the way, I'm never going to listen no, to. Fuck that. Or I guess him on the Vile Files, like he talked a little bit about that, which I said I actually thought yesterday I should have listened to it before today, and I, I will before next episode. I will too. I want to listen to that and I want to watch that because Maybe we should do a separate episode where we recap the Toms on Vile. Yeah, let's put that out there. Put that out. See yeah. if you guys because we will if you guys want to hear it. Yeah, because I think people are talking about that, so we could do something along those lines. But yeah, what a fucking moron! And of course, and you called it out perfectly when we were watching. Tom has nobody else to film with. Zero. I mean, we saw where he was with shorts, which we'll get into in a little bit. Nobody else wants to touch him with a ten foot pole rightfully so all the people that showed up at his party are fucking nobodies like even james walked in there and had no idea what the hell was going on and he worked with some of them yep. but he still doesn't remember who the fuck they are so no nobody wants to film with him so yeah jason's gonna be his buddy this That's dude's gonna come in here this dude's a yes man for tom he's just gonna do everything that tom says and we know that because he dm'd us not to mention, well, first of all, after we sent that back, he blocked us. Yes. But <laughs> not to mention. Which sucks because now we can't hear the new music. Oh, rats. Ah, shit. Bummer. The funniest part about it all is like, he has no camera presence. He's such a weenie on screen. It's like, I don't want to watch this guy. Like, Sandoval aside, this guy's a dud. Get him out of here. So I think it's going to be a really funny dynamic to watch him struggle through this season. It's even funnier that he's so, and then we jumped the gun a little bit, but I don't care. But it's funny that he's so up Sandoval's ass. Like, how could you be? It, it's just baffling. But I guess he really only has this career, maybe. And he needs Tom. Maybe. So that could be part of it. But look, I don't want to talk about Jason anymore because he's an absolute nobody. Uh, let's talk about a real somebody. Okay. Let's talk about Anne. I feel so bad for Anne. It's the worst. Like, I cannot imagine trying to do that job. And... But even like relaying messages back to her from Sandoval, I would have anxiety every time I hit send on a text. And she apparently just hangs out in the kitchen so she can play like middleman. <laughs> She's always in the kitchen and they always come down and talk to her at the island. But it's so funny because Ariana, the way she talks to her is very like matter of fact, like, no, this is what's going to happen. Da, da, da. Sandoval talks to her like she's his mom. He's like, well, could we do this? Like, what do you think about this? Like, he asks her for permission, more or less. I think that, I mean, Tom's, obviously, he employs Anne, but he's using Anne to bother Ariana. Oh, yeah. So he's just sitting there. Any little question that he has, he's going to have Anne message her yep. to bother Ariana. And that's what he's going to do over and over and over again. And you can kind of see it when he's talking about this stupid party sitting there with Jason going down through the list like well, what if what if there's just like 12 people and we're here until like just midnight and then we kind of call, call it quits and Anne immediately sends a text message he's smiling yep 
Because he knows what he's doing is bothering her. Yep. And he doesn't give a shit. Nope, not at all. But the one thing to take away from Tom earlier was that he feels betrayed by Schwartz. And remember that. Hold on to that because we'll get back into that later. That's a wild sentence to come out of his mouth. Yeah. But he feels betrayed by Schwartz, which is just honestly... Shows you how warped his fucking mind is. Exactly, exactly. But we got Ariana with her assistant and... The assistant breaks the news about the birthday party, and I agree with Ariana here where she's like, nah, he can go elsewhere. Like, I thought it's a weird... And that's, again, to your that's point... It's a power play. Totally. Yep. 100%. He's trying to impose his... Well, he's been home for a day. He's like, hey, I'm going to have people here now. It's like, dude, understand the situation a little bit. Don't even put her in that spot where she has to say no if you actually gave a fuck, right? If you really yep. cared and wanted to move forward from this, you wouldn't be playing petty bullshit. But you're Tom Sandoval, and you are King Petty Captain Bullshit. She tells Anne that if they have a party, she's going to call the cops, which, <laughs> look, petty matches petty. I mean, I, I don't falter for it. Like, initially, I was kind of like, all right, that's going to look bad on you. And then the more I watched the episode. I don't think she was actually going to call the cops. I don't think just... so either. But at the same time, the more I watched the episode, I was like, no, nah, fuck Tom. Yeah, call the cops. I could. Give and and she's not wrong either because she immediately understands that he's going to revert back to his old self. Like mm. him coming back and he doesn't want to be drinking because of Raquel, which, again, we'll, we'll get into a little bit later eventually he's going to turn back into the Tom that he was before he started dating Ariana is still he that already guy. is that guy, but he's going to put up these borders to make it look like he's not. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to act like he's not all the time, at least until he gets back into the good graces of a few of the people on the cast or the people that he actually has to film with. So she's not wrong. I, he could easily throw a rager until three, four o'clock in the morning, and then she would have to call the cops. That would be fucking so great, though. That scene would be amazing. That would be the cops perfect coming for to break up yeah. Sandoval's party, and God, I'm sure that'd be awesome. I'm sure if they went in there, they might find some non-savory items that might get them in some trouble. So hey, like a galaxy star projector. Yeah, like a galaxy star projector. But the next scene, we get LVP, and she's closing pump, as we all know. This has been in the media, uh, but you know it's been 10 years of pump, and Ken needs to retire because he can't be walking around West Hollywood in his 80s, according to Lisa, and Lisa can't be doing it in her 40s. Ken's got a new job anyway, and he's really good at it, spilling tea. Yeah, he's the, he's the king of spilling tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe, did you see um, Sandoval and Raquel in the hot tub? Cheerio. <laughs> That's my Ken. But moving on from there, we get James and Allie, and they're taking a stroll around the neighborhood, and they're talking about the dog and getting a dog, and we get to find out about Graham Cracker, and that was his and Rachel's dog. Graham's in Arizona, I guess, with Rachel's To his understanding. Yeah, he doesn't really know where the dog is. We know where the dog is now. Yes. Or where the the dog dog ends up. Newly named. It's got a new name. Hippie. Hippie, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, Yeah, so Graham is... I think at this point in time, yeah, I think Graham is with Rachel's parents in Arizona. Okay. But then at some point, quickly after that, Rachel comes back to LA and then gives the dog back to James, right? No, an adoption agency. Oh, right. She just goes and yeah, and then that's like, oh, she's a monster. Then we find out that James maybe wasn't the best dog owner. I don't know that we don't we don't know about any of that. Don't know that was Rachel saying he's not a good dog owner and she's not the most trustworthy. My favorite thing to come from that is that LVP is the one who found out that the dog was back in some sort of adoption agency. Oh yeah, and she contacted James and let him know. So she's got her ear to the ground of dog adoption agencies, which is really funny. I think she helps out with a lot of them. Yeah, that makes sense. But anyway, he's got a big show in uh, in Chicago, and look. It, it does appear that James Kennedy's DJing career is actually legitimately taking off. Like he's playing bigger shows. We talked about this last night, I think, but he's, he's playing some actual festivals. Like he's starting to move up I and mean, he's got a sold out show in Chicago that he's going to. So he's not going to be able to be there. But the next scene I want to talk about is Ariana with Lala and they're getting tea at what was it called? Peaches. Uh, how, how about them peaches? How about them peaches? Nope. That wasn't it. What a peach. What a peach. What, what a peach. peach. Yep. That was it. How about them peaches is a better name. But uh, what a peach, <laughs> and and Lala's checking in with Ariana, and Ariana brings up the party. This is a different Lala than we've seen, than I'm used to seeing. This is a very pragmatic and logical Lala, and some could mistake it, because initially when she was saying these things, I was like, oh, is she like empathizing with Tom a little too much? But then she adds a sentence or two in there. I was like, oh, no, she still hates him. All right, cool. Ariana says, yeah, if he's going to have this party, I'm going to call the cops. And Lala 
logically thinking was like, well, why? Like, why wouldn't, you know, technically it's his house. Like, why wouldn't you just let him have the party and not create an issue out of it? And ask the bigger question that we're all asking is, why are you still there? Why don't you just move out? And yeah. this is a conversation that I want to have with you. I understand where she's coming from, where she doesn't think that Tom's going to give her a fair shake as far as a price to buy her out. And he might not. She doesn't want to give him the satisfaction of doing that and then leaving that. But why would you want to be in that house? It's That's a broken saying. house, shitty memories. Like, do you want to spend the next four, five, six years of your life living in that house trying to exercise the demons that are Tom Sandoval, like getting rid of everything, that stupid fucking Lego thing that we want behind us. Is it a Lego portrait? It looks like a Lego. It looks portrait. like Legos, yeah. right? So I, I still want it back here so that we can throw eggs at Tom and that would be, be fun. Really Although funny. it's in your house so that I would actually stink after a little while. Don't we have to down. clean it. All right. Yeah, that's fine. You, you sold me back into it, but I sold I, you back into throwing eggs in my own home. Yes. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> good, good. Good, good. But the more important part of this, and, and obviously we talked about that, I like that Lala is in this position now. I do too. Because I don't see Sheena or Katie having this conversation with Ariana. Katie might. Katie might. Katie might. But she right didn't... now, I don't see it. Sheena would fumble it and fuck it up somehow. They're just, they just seem like yes people to me, where they're going to sit there and anything like with Ariana. Ariana? Oh, with yeah. Ariana. Yeah, yeah. Anything that Ariana is saying about Tom's party, whatever, they're like, yeah, fuck him. Call the cops. I agree. Lala is going to give you a logical answer. And this is important because we watched last week. Lala bridged that gap where she said, look, like, I don't know where we are. I hope that you see me as a friend, but this is what I'm doing. This is something that makes sense to me. And I, you know, I called Raquel last week. She's testing those waters to see like, okay, like how is Ari Ariana going to react to these things? Now you can have real conversations with her and this will help her in the long run too. It'll help Ariana in the long run. La logical. La logical. La the logical. only other person on the show that I could see having that conversation with her is LVP. Yeah. Yeah, and that would be a tougher one because she would take the firm stance rather than Lala. Was like, well, hey, LVP is also a Tom apologist. so yeah, yeah, she actually is. But I get where she's coming from in it. Like, I understand that you were the one that got scorned here. You are the one that is upset, and rightfully so. You have every reason to be petty. You have every reason to do what you're doing. I think that part of it I get. Like, you have every reason to drag this out as long as you would like to. Right. I'm just saying from a personal standpoint, like, wouldn't you want to just move on? We don't have emotions in it. That, that's that, that's the biggest difference. That's very true. And I think, you know, because it was such a convoluted disaster where there's so many different aspects to this whole thing, that it's probably one of those things that we just simply won't understand the gravity of it because we're not going through it. And I appreciate that part of it. I guess there's just that one part of me that's like, I feel like you would thrive if you got out of that fucking death trap of a house. Well, like, you know what the other thing could be? Tom's not liquid. Tom has a ton of money tied up in Schwartz and Sandy's. He used his parents' money. Another thing that they discuss is Dan. And Dan is Ariana's new boyfriend. And this is a little confusing to me. Because they started dating very soon after all this shit happened with Tom. Like a week or two after. I think it was 10 days or something like that. That's really quick. Not here to say it's wrong. Just saying that's really quick. I think it's interesting that being with Dan, who you haven't been with for that long and just got with after this huge breakup, now it's opened your eyes to potentially having a family? Ariana saying that and that the whole idea of having a family now with Dan, does that say more about Ariana's current headspace or more about how terrible of a partner Tom was? I think both. Because when she was explaining it, like being with somebody else, being with a partner that's not toxic, that's not a child that I can actually respect, trust, and have a real life with, makes total sense. I'm like, yeah, that would make sense, especially after being with the exact opposite end of the spectrum. Going to like an actual dude that actually can handle his business and take care of you as well and take care of the relationship, yeah, that would make a lot more sense. And yeah, that tracks for me when I'm hearing her say it. I'm like, all right, I see where you're coming from for sure. It's kind of eye-opening. Like, oh, this is what a relationship could be like? I never right. knew that. Totally. But again, I'm just talking about time frame. And I'm not saying that well, short we, things... Well, I think we can drop the time frame, though, because they're still together. That's a good point. So we don't really have to worry about the fact that they got together 10 days after okay. anymore. All right. Hey, that's a good point. You're right. All right. Cool. Yeah. I like being right. <laughs> But uh, moving on, we get the pump goodbye party, and it's been there for 10 years, and we got a sweet little speech from LVP. We got a sweet little montage. 
going back through, which was more, as you pointed out while we were watching, it was more like a recap of everybody's experience at Pump, like the cast of characters. It was more like the failures. It was like, it was more hey, let's failures. focus on, yes, I will officiate your wedding, Tom and Katie. Divorced. Hey, Tom and Ariana, you guys were making out over there, and Broken you said up. that you loved each other. How about that? That was really all it was. Yeah, you're, that's and then <laughs> I was expecting oh, yeah. like more of like and wow, look it. at all these fun parties that we've had over the years, and like look at all these okay. old like let's flash back to cool moments that happened at Pump. Instead, it was hey, here's a couple of failed relationships. It even showed Tom and Tom at the very end of it. That's yeah. actually really funny. I didn't see it that way. <laughs> Like, what a weird montage. Look at this place. What a disaster. Look at all the shit that went wrong here. This went wrong, this went wrong, and now we're closing our doors. Oh, my See you God. later. But Schwartz is uh, is bartending, which, for those of you that remember, the last time he tried to bartend there, it was a nightmare. He got so much anxiety that he couldn't finish his shift, and that was a time when he was a struggling model and didn't have any money, and LVP tried to do him a solid because Katie really hooked him up. And he was such a shit show that he couldn't even finish one shift as a bartender. So that was actually kind of like a full circle moment. I was like, as soon as he got back there, I was like, oh, he can do it. Yay. Like, let's close yeah, Now the that door his life that doesn't one. depend on it, right. all of a sudden he's good at it. Oh my well, God. I don't know if he was good at it, but he said he was more comfortable. More comfortable. But we get a conversation between Tom and LVP, and she's asking about Schwartz and Sandys. And as we know, they told Tom that they didn't want to be a part of it anymore, that he should step away. I think he's like a silent partner now because he still has a stake in it unless they buy him out of it, which I doubt anybody will because I can't imagine it's doing very well. So he's just going to hold on to that ticking time bomb. But Schwartz is upset because Sandoval made no effort to try to get back in anybody's good graces. Meanwhile, Tom is out playing a fucking tour with his band, his cover band, across the country and taking pictures and videos. And as James points out later, he's like, you looked fine to me on tour. Like, you said you're dealing with all this shit. You looked pretty okay. And I think we all at home are watching this tour going, what the fuck? Does this dude care at all? And I think Schwartz makes a really good point. Like, that was your first chance to get back in. You know how easy it would be to get back in Schwartz's good graces? Yeah. Make any kind of effort text him apologize every day till he takes you back and ask how the bar is doing and by the way you've sunk like a million dollars total into that place half of which or a quarter of that being your parents money why aren't you trying harder i, I know the answer to that you don't that's rhetorical yeah but it's so frustrating as schwartz and i'm glad that we're hearing schwartz speak up and i'm waiting for it to take a turn because as we know like he does the podcast with tom a lot now and they're hanging out again so I'm curious when that shift is going to happen. But for the time being, this Schwartz is nice. I like this Schwartz. I like a Schwartz that can say, yeah, this guy really fucked me over and I'm really mad about it. And I wish that he'd made any kind of effort to get back into the bar that's struggling so bad because of him. And how does LVP respond? She apologizes for Tom. She says over and over you cannot put this all on Tom, on Sandoval. It's like, what do you mean? Part of me... And like, obviously it's not doing well now because of Scandival or because of Sandoval. We should just actually just drop the whole Scandival thing. Well, it's just Tom. In this part you can, because I think it did well during Scandival because they got shock business of people going like, oh, we got to go there. That's a good point. Okay. Fair enough. However, if we remember, they weren't doing so well to begin with. No. Even before all of That's this a, dropped. Yeah. They fucking sucked at running a bar. They were the worst bar owners I've ever seen on TV, mm -hmm. which is saying a lot because we've seen a lot of bar owners on TV. I've watched a lot of Bar Rescue. With so Jonathan. do I. That's what I was yeah, referencing. Hey, yeah, fuck yeah. Nice. I fucking love that. That's my favorite hangover show. Anyway, so they are really bad at it. We watched Greg last year trying to walk them through just like standard protocol for pretty much everything going on. I have more sympathy for Greg now, by the way. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Sandoval was nowhere to be found then, and he's nowhere to be found afterwards. So why did we think that anything was going to change? Schwartz is, is not capable of running a bar by himself. He has no idea what the they fuck he's like doing. They have multiple he's, partners. They have multiple partners, but he's way in over his head. And obviously, the final nail in the coffin was Scandoval. So yes, while it is Sandoval's fault, it's also Schwartz's fault. So I don't know. I'm kind of going back and forth on this now. Obviously, I don't think that LVP should have spoken up on Sandoval's behalf and said that it's not all his fault. But it really isn't all his fault because Schwartz is also not good at this. When you break it down that way, I mean, yeah. And I, but that's, I don't think that's what her intent was. Her intent was what we already identified it as, I think. where she has a soft spot for Sandoval, and she's always going to make an apology for him. Yeah, because we saw it at the reunion. We saw it last season. Like We've seen it multiple times. So 
I guess for me, what that says, even if her implication was, you guys didn't get off the ground running to begin with. You can't put this all on him. Even if that was what she was trying to say, optics, time and place. She's not saying rebrand. She's That's, not saying just drop him entirely. How have they not rebranded? I have no idea, way? dude. Like that—that that makes I've thought that for so long. Like just change the fucking name. Change the name. Makes no sense. And if you think it can be successful, then buy Tom out. Get Maybe him out. It's in a there. good spot in Hollywood. I think it's going to be fine if you just rebrand it and just put out some good drinks and good food and good vibes. Or you could sell some of the fucking artwork and shit on the walls oh, that they God. overpaid for. But probably a lot of things they could do. Anyway. We move on from there, and we get to check in with Brock and Sheena, and they're getting ready for an emo night that they DJ'd last year. It was uh, Sheena, Katie, and Ariana were the DJs. I think so yeah, so they're getting ready to go be DJs for that, but they need to find a babysitter for Summer Moon, and we find out that Sheena has been dealing with postpartum OCD, which is a very real thing and a very serious thing. And I'm actually glad that she's speaking out about it. I'm glad she's talking about it. We always like to give, you know, housewives or anybody on any of these shows their flowers when they stand up and speak about touchy issues, things that, you know, a lot of people are nervous to speak up on. But it's important because there's people out there that can hear this and resonate with it and simply feel like, hey, I'm not alone in it. So I actually really appreciate that she's taking this stance this year. But we learn about it. She's afraid to go anywhere with Summer alone. She's afraid to leave Summer with anybody. She sits there and just stares at the baby monitor pretty much all day, according to Brock. And we see that scene of her literally sitting there just talking about Summer hurtling the crib when she's not even a toddler. That image was her as a baby. So yep. like that just shows you the headspace she's in. And that that's really tough. And I, I hope that we get a season of her working her way through that. But I do also think that the timing of Summer Moon along with all of the trauma that came with Scandaval, I guarantee that had something to do with it. Like, that's how far this goes. Because if you're trying to raise a baby in this atmosphere of everything that you thought being a lie, your close friend Rachel stabbed you in the back, your close friend Sandoval stabbed you in the back, and now you're bringing a child into the world, and this is your current world, that's going to fuck you up. So, like, I hope that Tom Sandoval watches shit like this and realizes the ramifications for what he did instead of trying to say people betrayed me and like no everyone so much hate. He's going to no say that has nothing shot. to do with him. But that's crazy to me. Like you, how could you not watch all of these people talking about their emotions, thoughts, and feelings right now in your wake? Because he doesn't care about them. Yeah, no. He only cares about himself. It's just, it's crazy. I, I'll never get it. And that, that's probably a good thing that I don't understand that headspace. Yeah, good but. for you. Thanks, bro. But we get to Schwartz and Sandy, and uh, not the bar, the people, and they are meeting up for the first time since Tom went to New Zealand. And Tom's sober, which, you know, I'll always give kudos to anybody that's sober. But at the same time, his reasoning for being sober is a lie, which makes it all bullshit. And that really fucking pissed me off when he fucking lied about his reason for not drinking. I was livid because he says, Rachel went to... Uh, facility for 30 days so i wasn't going to drink at all in support of her in hopes that when she got out we could do that together fuck you seriously like that is such horse shit that's not why you're doing it you would have gotten so many more points if you said yeah after everything that happened after all i did and everything i caused i thought it'd be a good time for me to like not drink and make things worse notice that he didn't say that to anybody but schwartz yeah oh yeah i think that just goes to show you that it's self-serving that's a good point Good point. He knows that he can say that to Schwartz, but he wouldn't say that. He didn't even say that to Anne. He was talking about not drinking to Anne. He didn't <laughs> say that Anne. there. I wrote poor assistant in my notebook. Oh, God. Poor Anne. How many times? One, two, three, four times in 10 minutes I wrote poor, this poor assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but Schwartz brings up the bar, and what I'm liking about him this season, I know we're only two episodes in, but I like the fact that he can bring things to Tom's attention at least like he's not being a pussy this season at the very least like I'm I'm still not like forgiving Schwartz for everything he's done but at the same time like I like that he's changing he's going to change back because he's going to hang out with Tom again and, and we're yep. going to wait for that to happen and but we already kind of saw that in the beginning of the conversation because it looked like things were falling into place where Sandoval was able to control the conversation did for a talk second. about whatever he wanted to talk about and then give every excuse under the sun and just hope that 
for whatever reason, Schwartz is going to sympathize with him, which I thought that's how it was going to go because I we've seen that happen a million times. That always happens. Whenever Tom Sandoval fucks up, Schwartz will swoop in and listen to him for about five minutes and say, yeah, man, I get it. They'll hug it out and then they go their separate ways. But after the conversation that Schwartz had with LVP, he went in there and he had a completely different agenda and he stuck to it. So props to him. Yeah, he did. And he tells him, you know, you didn't show up at all. Like you left, you went to New Zealand, you went on tour with your band and you left me to deal with all this shit at the bar. It's not going well at all. And Tom's response is Ariana hasn't paid the bills in eight months. And my account was overdrawn. I had to move money from here and here. I needed to tour for the money. There's no fucking way that he made enough on that tour that he took enough home to pay for a $2.3 million house and all the bills, utilities, and everything else. I don't know. I think he did make a lot of money from that tour. Did people, he? people were hate going, yeah. I know. And then getting kicked out because they had signs about supporting Ariana, but, but they were still buying tickets. Overhead cost, travel, hotels, food. Like, how much did the tickets cost? I have no idea. I, and look, maybe, but at the same Between time. that and the show, maybe. At the same time, but the, the, the increments of money that he was talking about, he's like, I had to move like $1,000 from this bank account 500 from and here. 500 from here just to cover the mortgage. It's like, that's a $2.3 million house. $500 isn't covering your fucking mortgage. No. Not in this economy. This economy? Not in this economy. Get the hell out of here. In this economy? But Tom has the audacity to say that Schwartz hurt his feelings. You made me sad. Because you went on podcasts and talked shit about me. Of all the podcasts you could have you gone went on, on Jax's and talked shit. Which also has a role to play, too. Yeah, I know. Like, if he had gone on anybody else's podcast, it would have been any different. That is actually something that Sandoval would think about and care about. It would be. And that's really funny that it was on Jax's podcast. But his big issue is, why can't you just do shit to my face? And Schwartz says what we're all saying. Just say sorry. Like, just say sorry. All you should be saying right now is, I'm sorry to everybody. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I went on the podcast. You went off and toured with your buddies that you pay to be there. And you left me to deal with all this shit and didn't make any fucking effort. Yeah, dude, shut up and say you're sorry. And then Sandoval asks him, are you going to stick with me? And I was really proud of Schwartz for this response. He says, I got to do what's best for me. And it only lasts for about... Mm, less than 24 hours because he goes to Sandoval's party with a cake. Yeah. And that, to me, is the first stone back in their relationship. They're rebuilding this house now. They're coming Come back on, together man. immediately. Have some balls for like a day or two. Just Go to day. emo night. You could have had fun. Maybe you bridge the gap with Ariana because that's supposedly something that you're really interested in for Not whatever anymore. fucking reason. Not anymore. You got Not Sandoval anymore. cake. Yeah, you don't do that. Like, you can't have this great moment where people are cheering for you. And they were because I was looking at Twitter. People were happy for you. You finally grew a backbone. You finally stood up to Sandoval. You could have just done this years ago, and you would have been in a much better place now, but you didn't. And now you have the opportunity to do it, and you should have done it. And you do it in voice only, and then show up the next day with your actions through a cake. Yep. Stupid. So wave goodbye to any chance you had getting a relationship with Ariana, and say hello to Sandoval, because you guys are boys again, but we'll get to that later. The next scene, we get Sheena and Brock, and Tori's coming over, and Tori is the potential babysitter who is a longtime friend of Sheena. She's younger, maybe like a- Said she's known her since she was 16, yeah. Like a big sister kind of setup, maybe more like that, but regardless, she trusts Tori, and she's coming over to, it's like a vetting scenario, to make sure everyone vibes, and just to make Sheena comfortable with this entire process, because she's terrified to leave her daughter. But I gotta ask you. What the fuck is Brock's problem? I don't know, dude. Like, just fucking let your wife take her steps to get through something that's a big issue. You bitching about not being able to go out and saying, well, we could have had a babysitter a million times and I've been asking for this for so long, isn't helping. No. Be supportive. You're finally, look, look at it from this perspective, Brock. You're finally in a position where you're about to get over that hurdle. Yeah. Just support her. Now you're going to talk shit? Now you're going to talk shit at the fucking finish line? You've been waiting for months for this, for her to be comfortable enough to leave summer with somebody else that isn't somebody in the family immediately. You finally have that and you've been pining for this forever and you're going to start talking shit. It's baffling. Be supportive. Let her get through it. And then you get what you want and you can show her. And look, if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. That's nothing that you can really control. If Sheena's just not comfortable with it, then she's not comfortable with it. 
And then you try again later when she is comfortable again. That is what happens. You are in this to support your fucking wife, bro. You're a husband. You're a husband. Do I understand where he could be a little frustrated maybe that it's taken almost a year to get to this point? And like, yeah, it's probably hard because he goes in his confessional to complain, which again was astounding. But just as, you know, every small task to Sheena right now is this monumental thing. We don't get anything done because of this OCD. It, it's taking over everything. Like, what is Brock doing to help? That's what I'm saying. Is he, like, trying to bring in other people to talk to Sheena or about this? Or is he pushing her saying, because he says to her, Sheena's seems like. mom, he's like, it's like, yeah, like, you guys, you're, she's surrounded by yes men, and, and I'm giving her, like, tough love. It's like, she doesn't need tough love. She needs support. You she think needs... he was going to win that battle, too? Like, that's what the fuck so was he weird. doing? Like, look around the room, you dumb shit. Like, that's her mom, who, by the way, doesn't like you very much. Yeah. I got that vibe very Yeah, quickly. very quickly. But why would she? When you're saying things like, you know, because Sheena can't let things go. It's like, can't let things go? She has postpartum OCD, my guy. You just belittled that in front of her mom and potential babysitter. You're also arguing in front of the babysitter. And the, the baby. F- and the baby. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, I was know, so confused. I, I couldn't wrap my head around that one. I was I was really glad that Sheena's mom clapped back at Brock and was like explaining, like, this is how it should be, you big moron. I, I just I was so confused at this scene. And I didn't even think about what you were saying. Like, you're there. You're about to go out. So close. You're literally there. You know what should happen, though? Brock should stay home and watch the baby that and Sheena so should go funny. out to emo night. Because you know what? That is, how have you not thought about that? That's a baby step. That would be a baby step. Sheena gets to go out and maybe, you know, she doesn't bring the baby monitor and she just gets to text you every 20 minutes if she wants to. Whatever the fuck she wants to do. She's out of the house. I'm She's away from the baby. Why are you not staying home and offering to do this months ago when you wanted it? That is a baby step. Do you think he did? No. You don't think he's ever brought I don't think up. so. I, I think what he wants is for the two of them to go out together and have fun. Maybe. But it doesn't. It just, I just don't get the vibe from him that he's done anything to help this, except My, for complain. I don't know. All in all, it was a really confusing. I don't know what his approach was. I don't know why he took that approach. And hopefully, they can figure it out. And hope. I mean, above all else, you know, Brock aside, hopefully Sheena can feel comfortable when she goes out. Because I did agree with Brock in the one sentence that he said in. This will help her confidence. This will help her feel better. This will help her understand that, no, just because you leave the house and leave somewhere with somebody else does not mean anything bad is going to happen. She's going to be totally fine when you get home. You're going to be better for it, more confident, X, Y, Z. So this is a good thing. Yeah, but he's able to articulate it then. Yeah, much later. You just do that then. He should have done that in the beginning. But like he he needs to get his point across. I don't think he believes that postpartum. And that's what I was going to say that. I, I didn't want to say that, but that's that's I get that vibe, too. The, the second that he said Sheena can't let things go instead of saying Sheena has postpartum OCD, to me, that was him saying this is bullshit. She just can't get over it and can't get over herself. Like, Correct. can we get out of this fucking house, please? I- Moving on, we get Allie and James, and Schwartz comes over with another plant for James's house. That's his thing now. He's the plant and bug guy. Oh, God. That's what he <laughs> just gave James a plant last week. He's, now he's got two. And next week, he's going to bring a bug. He's going to fill the... Fu- yeah, now he's, he probably already has bugs in the plants. They, oh, I still can't get he over it. He takes one out of the he, tank and just like puts it on the plant. And he's like, you're going to live here now. This is Terry. He's my bug. And then Allie's cat just eats that bug immediately. And then Schwartz has a meltdown. Yes. Because the bug died. That would be great I TV. like this scene. That would be really good Yeah, TV. that's funny. But... Allie, we find out, has started her astrology business, and she's going to read his birth chart. And I think that this is Googleable, and I think that we need to get our birth charts and see where our planets were when we were born, and go through them together. And I'm serious about this one. You even said when we didn't get to see the birth chart that you were bummed out that we didn't get to see the birth chart. Well, I gave Allie props right away because at least she's monetizing it, so we don't have to listen to her talk about astrology and me groan and roll my eyes. Now she's making money off of it, which I'm all for. Make your money. So you're, Do your thing. You don't think we're going to hear about it because she's monetizing it now? We can hear about it, but at least I have respect for the fact that she's making money. Oh, okay. That's where I'm going. All right, so you're a little more open. I wanted to see Schwartz's... I wanted to see Allie's breakdown of Schwartz because I wanted to see her in astrology terms call him an idiot and we already kind of started off that way because she called him a people pleaser almost immediately yeah and he took offense to that so i wanted her to break it down even further in words that schwartz doesn't quite understand that essentially label him as an idiot who's going to go back to sandoval that's what i wanted where all of us are sitting back we're like wow 
She just read him down, and that's exactly what he's going to do. And he has no idea. He's just happy go lucky. He's like, huh? You guys like the plant? Yeah. Stars. Yeah. <laughs> it's that explains a lot. I've got my bugs. I get it. I get it. But during this whole thing, Sandoval texts James that he's having a little birthday party with the most nonchalant, like, hey, bro, my bad about everything. I'm having people over. If you have plans already, I totally get it. Like, he's milking. It wasn't even a my bad about everything. It was just a my bad that I haven't spoken to you. He said, like, what a clusterfuck. Yeah. It, yeah was, <laughs> we're still giving him too much credit. I know, right? What a cluster. <laughs> we can't even put our heads in that space to say, yeah, no. He completely ignored everything and just said, hey, you want to come over for my birthday? <laughs> yeah, it's my birthday party tomorrow. I'm throwing a party for myself because I have no friends. Like, <laughs> that's what that text said. But I think that, and we, we saw it a little bit last year, and it came out more as anger from James, which is how he tends to express himself when he gets emotional. He gets mad first, apologetic second, sad third. That's the progression of DJ James Kennedy. And him and Allie are driving to Tom's. They make the decision to go, and he voices why. And he's like, I have yet to hear from him, period. Not hear his side of things. I just haven't heard from him, and I need this. And I do think he does. I really think I agree. Yeah. that James needs some kind of, not even closure, just anything. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, where were you? Why haven't you said sorry to me? Why haven't you reached out at all? Like, He's giving him a chance. Uh, James does or did at some point in time have a soft spot for Tom because he looked, he looked at Tom him as a big brother. Exactly. So I think that's really what he was doing. I don't think this was a closure. I don't think this was something that James definitely needed so that he could kind of move on from everything that was going on. I think he was legitimately giving Tom a chance. Yeah. Because if Tom went into that conversation and said, look, man, I'm really fucking sorry. Like I betrayed your trust and everything that James wanted to hear, James probably would have broken down. It would have been a stepping stone. It would have been a stepping stone, but I I could see James breaking down because he has or had a lot of respect for Tom and he looked up to him. So I think that's what he wanted. And I think in the back of his mind and look, Allie's a smart girl. She even said that she didn't even want to go in there because she's team Ariana, which is great. We support. We love that. She stayed in the car. James goes in by himself very awkwardly. He gave Tom a chance. Tom completely missed it. I think that in the back of James's mind, he understood There's a chance that Tom just completely ignores it and acts like nothing's wrong and tries to excuse himself away or play like the pity card for himself. And that's not going to go well. So look, just based off of James's actions after that went down, I think that he knew that was going to happen. I do, too. I think that he was. Maybe he needed that more than anything. You know what? From our perspective, that's actually a good point because that will allow him to be like, this guy just sucks. Like he's a fucking monster. Like why did I waste any time coming over here? I can move on from it. Yeah, maybe that is the closure that he needed. Yeah, you're actually that's a good point. But James walks in, it's awkward as shit, and you look around the room, and he says it for us. He's like, "Who the fuck are these people? Like it's a who's who." And then we get this guy Brett, who we've never seen, who goes up to James while James is waiting to have a conversation with Tom. This was so funny too. Because he goes up to Tom and says, let's have a chat. And Tom's like, let's do it. And like walks away. Random Brett walks up to him and is like, hey, man, like, have you heard from Katie at all? Because like she totally iced me out. Cut to confessional. James, who the fuck are these people? He doesn't even know this guy is. Nope. Brett, who are you? No clue. I will not. Brett was trying to get the tea. He was like, what, what's going on with the friend group? Like, it sounds like everybody's at odds. Like, yeah. shut up, dude. Yeah, fuck off. You're not getting on the show, Brett. And we don't want to see you on the show. It's impressive. Brett. He even got a nameplate. Isn't it? The fact you deserve it. I will not do well if we constantly see Tom's other friends. Yeah, let's not do that. Honestly, what Bravo should have done in that moment was question mark, question mark, question mark, and then underneath Tom Tom bartender question mark. That would have been really. That would have been really funny. I don't know why we have to delve into his friend group of people that are supporting him during this time. Like we don't care. We do not care. I don't need to see Brett again. I hope we do not. Unless they do that where it's Brett question mark would be funny if we see him. Yeah, let's keep doing that. But I don't know. It's just it's really annoying. But they end up having their conversation and it goes how we thought it would go. Probably how James thought it would go. And James says to him, and that also bugged me too. And this, I think James got the the gist right out of the gate. Because when they sit down to talk, the first thing out of Tom's mouth is not, hey man, I'm really sorry. James has to bring it up. He's like, are you sorry for betraying me? And he's like, but betraying you betraying you yeah bitch like what do you mean that's not a question mark it's not a question mark yeah you fucking but you betrayed everybody take some kind of ownership instead he tries to use his relationship with Kristen from fucking 10 years ago 
when James hooked up with her back in their apartment when they were dating, that's the ammo you're going to use against James? That was, it was baffling to me. It was so fucking nuts that he would take the time to throw that back in James's face. Guess what, Tom? Since that has happened, you guys have become very fucking close. You're very good friends until you screwed it up, until you betrayed him. That's what happened. For you to try to throw this back in his face just shows what an insecure, narcissistic worm you are because you can't, for two seconds, two seconds, be like, wow. Even fake it. Fake it. James, man, I'm so sorry, bro. That's like, the other part of it. It's like, how fucking dumb are you? Like, what do you want from this? Do you not want anybody to like you or even have a chance? You're going to stand pat on this stance. It makes no fucking sense. You could just lie your way through this. You can fake it. We watched you fake emotions last year. You broke down and started crying at LVPs. You weren't crying because of your love lost with Ariana or your relationship's gone or your life is falling apart. You were crying because people finally saw you for who you were. You can clearly fake it. We've seen you do it. Why didn't you do it here? It would have gone a long way. We would have called you out for it immediately because we know that everything you're doing is a lie. But you couldn't even do that. And every conversation that you've had since then, you went on this soul searching trip where you're fucking tour in New Zealand. You had a conversation with Schwartz the day before where Schwartz called you out. That should have been a wake up call. No shit. If Schwartz is not just falling in line with you and he's calling you out for your shitty behavior and telling you that you need to just apologize to everybody, that didn't resonate at all. No. Nope. Like, how dumb are you? And what are you gonna, what are you going to gain from any of this? Nothing. He's not going to gain anything. And he doesn't have the wherewithal to understand that. Instead, he's going to call James. He's going to call James narcissistic. Mm -hmm. That's very narcissistic. Coming from you? Are you fucking kidding me? So funny, dude. This whole conversation is I, I narcissistic on it. Tom's part. I, I know. It's, I, it's I love entertaining it so as shit. He's such an idiot. But, like, God damn it. I, I can't wrap my brain around. And I know, again, I, I shouldn't be able to. I shouldn't be able to think like Tom Sandoval. And I don't want to. But what the fuck, man? Like, seriously. Look, we thought that he couldn't be more of a piece of shit than he was last year. He's <laughs> starting, to, starting to prove us wrong. It's almost worse than last year because you've been. No, it caught. is worse than last like, year right now. It, the jig's up, bro. Like, we know what you did. We're waiting don't for. Don't feel bad about anything. He doesn't at all. He feels bad. No remorse. He feels bad he got caught. Yep. He feels bad that he now has to withstand this shit storm that he's got coming his way. He wants sympathy because of all the nonsense and hate that's been coming towards him. But again, it goes back to what he said in the beginning of the fucking episode. All these things that life has thrown at me. Life didn't throw shit at you. You threw all these things at yourself and the people around you. And instead of taking any kind of ownership, accountability, or anything... You decide to blame everybody else, point fingers elsewhere, burn any bridges that you potentially had in getting back in the good graces with people, and continue to be Tom Sandoval. And that sucks from a humanity standpoint. Great TV. It's great TV. But as Fun far TV, as, I'm laughing a lot. As far as restoring any kind of faith in humanity for I me. I don't give a shit what he does. It's I, upsetting. I don't care if he's friends with these people ever again. It's really funny to me. He's going to be. I mean, we've seen it. We've I know. I know. That I'm, but that also. I don't, yeah, but I don't know. Because those pictures... They say pictures uh, tell a story. I, I didn't get a whole lot of a story from that. I don't know if they're going to be friends. Picture says a thousand words. Is that it? it it's both, actually. I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, both, yeah. I think more... I don't know, because like we've definitely seen... There's Just wait and see. Why don't we, why don't we just wait and, and see? see? Oh, that's what I was going to say, is I'm excited that we have that like in the back of our minds, that we know that he has potentially gotten closer with people, yeah. so we can pay attention to like where people are starting to fall in. Like, Yeah, this is when being a broad bro is really difficult, because we know things that have happened. Yeah. So when we're watching this, we can't just live in the moment. We're always... I still try to be. I, I try so hard and got so far. But in the end... Didn't even matter. Emo night, baby. Woo! Woo! <laughs> but uh, let's get into some questions. I bet we've got a bunch. So let's jump right in. Up first from Makeup Lab. What kind of friends, in quotes, do you think Tom Sandoval really has? Bandmates? Yes. Yes. You and said it perfect. Bandmates and people that just want to be on TV. And people that he pays to be around him. That too. A.K.A. his bandmates. Oh, boy. I love this question. Love this question, and I'm going to tread lightly because I appreciate you asking. From Rachel Nicholas, I have an Instagram for my cat. Is that the same as having one for Summer Moon? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. First and foremost, Rachel, we love you. We're so glad that you are a listener and that you follow us. It's amazing. 
Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> Might be worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. It you're... depends on the captions. If you just take pictures of your cat and put your cat on Instagram, that's fine. But if you start doing the voice and saying this is what my cat is saying as if the cat's writing the captions, that's where we draw the line. I just went to her page to try to see oh, if God. I could find her cat page. And uh, she's she's private, so we can't, we can't see. Okay. We don't need to but do research. But hey, here's the other thing, Rachel. You shouldn't care what we think. We're idiots. Yeah. Like we're we're certified more. Care a little bit what we think. No, you really shouldn't. Come on, you shouldn't care. You do you. Don't worry about us. You keep that Instagram up. Maybe it'll go viral. Then you'll make a ton of money off your cat, and we'll look like idiots. From Katie Bean. Ooh, this is a good one. From Coach Velada. What amount of money would it take for you guys to be Sandoval's assistant? Oh God. Um, I take a million flat. That much? Yeah. Oh, I would way less. <laughs> really? Realistically, yeah, way less. If you gave me like, yeah, but like, what kind of freedoms do we have? Can we tell him that he's being an asshole? That's a good point. Like, are we allowed? We're gonna get fired. No, we'll get fired. We would get he fired can. immediately. I would take for me to take the job seriously. It would have to be a billion flat, five grand a week. That's not that much money. No, no. But if I had to just stand there with Why a, why don't you sell feed picks? Five grand a week to be five an assistant. Five grand a week to be Tom Sandoval's assistant. That's 20 grand a month. Selfie picks, dude. How much is that a year? 140? Oh, no. I need more 60 than 60 grand a year. Five oh, grand five a grand week. a week. Oh, I, I was doing this under the pretense you that it was five month. grand a month? Yeah, I was really no. confused. Okay. Five grand a week. 20 grand a month. Okay. Still and I still enough. think it'd be more. I think I need close. to make 250 a year. 250 a year, I would do it. Yeah. <sighs> You're lying. No, you're fucking lying. I wouldn't do it. Bullshit for two hundred fifty. Put up with his assholeness. Assholeness. I like that word. Now, nah, whatever. Agree to disagree. <laughs> Ooh, Charnik one. Good question. Can you get Ann on the pod? We can certainly try. We'll try. We're gonna try. We're definitely gonna try. That's a great idea. I don't know though. If she's still Sandoval's assistant, she wouldn't be able to tell no us. No way. As much. There's no. No way. She's way. lasted right. Absolutely. No not. sane person would have. No. From Lillianne Marge, the assistant. Please get her on your pod. All right. This we'll is try. This is priority number one now. We'll do our best. From Jessica Zins. Not Zins like the pouches, Z-I-N, in case you got excited. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Sandoval should have pitched in ideas while he was taking a break from the bar? Interesting point, actually. Interesting. That would have gone a long way with Schwartz. Yeah. and I th- What kind of ideas is he going to pitch in? But I also think that Schwartz saying pitch in ideas was more a generalized thought of, I wish that you just gave Checked any in. fuck about the bar. Yeah. I think that's more what he was saying. And just in his brain, he's like, pitch an idea. or Because I also think that in Schwartz's mind, pitching an idea to the other partners would get Sandoval somehow back in their good graces, which is false. Yeah. But I think that Schwartz thinks that would go a long way. Yeah, I, I think it would have worked on Schwartz, but nobody else. Yeah, exactly. Let's do one more. From Christine some math nerd. Woof. Kristen, god damn it. Let me take a look. No, I got it. I got it. I'm really bummed out now. Kristen is a math nerd. Um <laughs> <laughs> fuck. What did I say? Kristen is I got that's a that sucked. I feel stupid. Christini. Thank you. Oh no, it is Kristen as a math nerd. Ah, see, I don't feel yeah. as dumb now. Kristen is a math nerd. Thank you for doing that. I might you did go. you actually do that? Are you trying to just make me feel better? No, that is actually what okay, it says. Okay, cool. Yeah. Ah. No, that's legitimately what it says. I'm not fucking with you. I know. Kristen is a math nerd. Okay. All right. Yeah. I know. That's why I took a big groan. I thought it was a joke. I thought you were you could pronounce it, and then you just kind of leaned into the math nerd thing. Oh, no. I was trying to say Christine okay. Sam Athnerd. That's not her name. It's not. Kristen's just a math nerd, which is cool. Good for you, Kristen. But to your question, why do you think Tom is refusing to show Ariana the itemized bills and just demanding money? Because he's lying. Yeah, he's definitely lying. That's he's all. a thousand percent lying. He he made up the whole story. I I imagine that Ariana's paying for something. Yeah, I and if and she's he's just not, trying to get sympathy from Schwartz. If she's not, it's it's actually really funny. And I don't even like look down on that. If she's no, just stiffing him, <laughs> that'd be really funny. And now he's having to move five hundred dollars from this account. She's also well, making a lot good. more money than he is right now, so that would be really funny because she's even not spending funnier. it. Yep, even funnier. But uh. Oof, this is going to be a long season. I'm excited. Doozy. Yeah, yeah. This is 
lot to talk about. And this wasn't even a lot happening. This is just the return of Tom. Like drama's not even well, that's a lot. Up. Yeah. It is a lot. I'm just saying, like it's not popping off. We haven't had a feud yet. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm excited for this season. I'm pumped. I got a I got a little You got a little what? I don't know. Dick tickle? Little little Drake tickle. A little Drake tickle? <laughs> yeah. Nips little... hard? Boop, 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 boop. My, yeah. Oh, good. Good call back. But uh Anyway, to finish it off, we got a couple of announcements. One, first and foremost, our live show is officially one month away, and we are still selling tickets very fast, which is super awesome, super exciting. But also, a PSA for everybody out there that's thinking about coming to the show, make sure you get your tickets sooner than later. We don't want you to miss out. We want you to come hang out with us, maybe a special guest, who knows. But come hang out with the Bros, City Winery, Philadelphia, March 6th. We'll see you there. Announcement number two, for those of you that follow us on Instagram, you might have seen a little poll out there for some upcoming potential cities. All I'm going to say on that is keep your eyes on the socials because there might be some announcements. Edging the audience. I love it. I love it. Just keep your eyes peeled because we might be coming to a city near you, Australia. Don't do that. We're not. It's my bit. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to come out there yet. Hopefully someday, but not yet. But uh, you got anything else? Nope, I'm good. All right, cool. Well, Rob Rose out here. See you.